Why Mortal Kombat 2? Why Mortal Kombat 2 specifically? Because mm. that's my fave. <laughs> Where did they, was that well, just the one you could find? <laughs> no. I mean, okay. First of all, Mortal Kombat 2 is the best. Ever. Right? Like, not every <laughs> cabinet arcade game worked like that. Sometimes the first one was the best. In this case, Mortal Kombat 2, I think, was the best. Same. And we had this opportunity to do something that Naughty Dog couldn't do when they were making the game, which is use real stuff. Because when, and it, I don't know the rules. I don't understand the intellectual property thing. In the video game, the game's called The Turning. Yeah, and, and the game, um, one, you know, again, when I skipped school, the highlight of skipping school was going to the arcade. Absolutely. Course, by far. Yeah. Uh, so that this had to be like kind of the climax of what Riley wants to show Ellie. Which, by the way, like I have just recently rewatched this episode. I, I I tear up every time they're standing in front of that arcade. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like <laughs> some combination of like what's happening in the episode and my own nostalgia for arcades that have just kind of disappeared over the years. So when we made the game, um, we couldn't use an existing game because we would have had to recreate it. Mm, so that um, so that's one thing. And then licensing would have been a headache. So we just never went down that road. So we made our own game called The Turning. It was called The Turning because when I was working on a comic book <laughs> that eventually became The Last of Us when it was pitched at Naughty Dog, it was called The Turning. Um, so this was kind of like homage to myself, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, it's just one of those things you imbue with stuff to make it more personal to you so you get more invested in it. That's very much a ripoff of Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And it was always intended to be that way. And the reason we did Mortal Kombat 2 or just thought about it is there's this evolution of games and um, violence in games, how violence is used in games. In Mortal Kombat 2, there was this whole conversation around it with violence in the media and Senator Lieberman wanting to censor yeah. video games. And that's where mm -hmm. like the rating system all came out. So it's like a lot of like really interesting political things that happened with video games with that specific game. But to go back to what Craig was saying, we had an opportunity to use the original source, the original inspiration, which is Mortal Kombat 2. And I'm like, wait a minute, we could actually like probably get the the rights for this relatively easy because it's Warner Brothers. Yeah. So it was it was just very cool to be able to use that. So then we worked backwards from there. And if you notice the opening of the episode when the we're poster. in Ellie's room, she has a poster from Mortal Kombat 2 and the two, these girls would have had an obsession with this particular thing because Ellie just has this, not dissimilar to me, an obsession with violent media, which like, you know, I grew up like at that age, like, um, or maybe a little bit older, I saw Pulp Fiction and I read Sin City and just like very much drawn to that kind of experiences at the time. Yeah. And there's this nice circle back payoff to a moment that happened in the third episode when Ellie finds a dead uh, Mortal Kombat 2 game in the convenience store. And tells Joel about how she had a friend and she played Melina and she would swallow you whole and barf out your bones. And now we see it. Yeah. And one of the things that I was obsessive about because I concentrate enormously on sound. I try whenever I'm writing scripts to write sound into the script. And then when we're mixing, I, and I told our mixing team, which is amazing, led by Mark Fishman and Kevin Roche, guys, this isn't going to be a normal mixing experience for you. I am going to get so granular about so many things. And one of the things I got really granular about was the way it would feel in your stomach when you drop that quarter, yeah. that bass. Boom. Yeah. This is one of those meta moments where there's a television show based on a video game and the guy that made the video game and the guy over here that's helping adapt the video game both love video games. <laughs> right. And we have our whole lives and giving everybody a chance, especially I think kids who haven't known the mall arcade experience the way we have to just enjoy other people enjoying it. I think was great. It was beautiful. And I love how Riley knows inherently that Ellie is going to love the fatality moves, the special right. finishers. For people who know Mortal Kombat, especially when you played it in 93, the only way you knew about the cheat codes or, the, or fatality codes was 
anecdotally. You you heard the rumors because somebody in the so arcade. So glad you brought that up. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought That's that exactly up because right. I'm sure people will watch this and be like, "How do they know the moves? How did they figure out the moves?" This is actually something we talked quite quite a lot about. And it's like again, as they collect these totems from this old world, one of the things that used to be really popular and was still popular in the early 2000s were video game magazines. Yeah, the yes. magazines. Big glossy things yeah. like a proper book you'd flip through and it would yeah. discuss that's how levels you beat that or, level. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize I missed that. Yes. There. Yeah. So, right, if they were like infatuated with this game, Ellie would collect anything to do with this game, including magazines that would have listed the moves that they would have memorized as if they could ever play it. But of course, the tragic thing is they could never play it because right. those games don't exist anymore until today. Yeah. 